Squeezy Link Podcast, Episode 9, with Joe from Well Nice Prince. Yay, it all worked. <laughs> Was that a bit scary, trying to do it on an iPad? Yeah, it's only the weird thing is the camera's like, wait, the camera's like there, and then you're like there. So it's like, well, it's kind of working out where to look. So if I'm like looking off to the side, it's because the, the camera's in the middle rather than like up the top. So, okay. Yeah, <laughs> I might just be like looking in a weird... No um, problem. I find myself like thinking and I look to the sky like yeah. there's something happening over there. Um, that's awesome. Thank you so much for coming on as well. That's um, right. Yeah. Should we just, uh, can you uh, start by like saying who you are and what your yeah. studio is? Um, so I'm uh, Joe Stafford from Well Nice Prince, uh, based in Norwich. And we kind of specialise in uh, paper-based printing mostly. So um and for like artists illustrators designers you know yeah who, you have um, such a rich history as well so it kind of feels yeah. like that's like tip of the iceberg yeah what you can do isn't that's it that's what i'm up to at the minute <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like uh can you tell people like how you got started in screen print and like what it means to you and like how much like you've always done it haven't you as far as yeah. i can tell um it's funny one like when i think back I, I like I honestly don't know how I ended up <laughs> um, oh, <no. laughs> because um so I studied like illustration at uni but I only ever did like one screen print when I was at uni and mm -hmm. just because they had kind of weird access arrangements for like illustration students like you could only get in at certain times like the fine art students had priority I know um, yeah we had that as well that's it um, but I kind of, and I did other printmaking, so I did like lots of like collagraphs um, uh, because that studio was kind of more, um, it was easier to get access to. Um, so what, like, what is collagraph like uh, for people who don't know about it? Um, you kind of stick like stuff to a board and then ink that board up and then put it for a press. But you can, it's like, so it's quite textural. So I was like... <laughs> I was really obsessed with duct tape. <laughs> you know, right. tape. Like, oh, this texture's gone crazy. Yeah, Let's like, duct tape everything. Just like make all these designs using like tape and then just ink them up and stick them through the board. <laughs> yeah. I've still got loads of the like boards that's like, oh, I don't know what to do with them. But, um, if Did you do the classic art person thing where at one stage in a project you got a mannequin and painted it? Did you ever do um, that? No, <laughs> like, I did, yeah. I got other things. I have still got a chair. Have I still got the chair? I don't know. I had a chair which I completely covered in tape that I found in the skip. <laughs> is this tape like this isn't just the printing, is it? It's like everywhere. <laughs> yeah, it's, but it was all sorts of different tapes. Like I've still got like boxes of different tapes, like all different <laughs> colours, duct tape, electrical tape, any kind of strange stationary sort of type tape yeah so if anyone's missing tape they know you've got it yeah <laughs> you like siphoned it away yeah so, can you talk to us anyway. about uh, sorry what huh anyway so that's a side that's a whole, oh, nother, go on. A whole nother podcast this is, this... tape yeah <laughs> um so like how many people are working at well nice prints now um there's uh three of us kind of who do the screen printing and then there's kind of, it's our main uh, client, if you will, is like a Moosey Art. I don't know if you've heard of or seen when we've posted yeah. stuff on Instagram. So that's kind of like one of the, uh, no, that's that's a gallery, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so Fraser, who runs that, so he kind of, he started up the same time I sort of started Print to the People. So that was like 10, uh, 12 years ago, he started Moosey. And I've always kind of printed for him um in whatever studio I've been doing stuff mm. in and then he was always as Moosey grew he was like wanting to do more and more screen prints and he was always like how can we do more screen prints and I've always been like well I guess if we had a dedicated studio that was just for auditioning we could make more and then mm. it just sort of kind of came together sort of during uh the pandemic <laughs> yeah and so I can't remember what the question was. Oh, so anyway, there's we share the studio with Moosey, so they're kind of upstairs and we're downstairs. Oh, I so see. Okay. 
there's uh, like three people who work for Moosey and that hot some of them kind of work a bit for both because like Jodie who's um she liaises with the artist but she does all the art working and then mm -hmm. it gets passed sort of downstairs to us so Jodie sort of works for both <laughs> oh nice sense. okay yeah and is it is it Tom as well yeah yeah um, Tom so Tom started with us uh, he actually was an intern so newer um the local art school had an internship program which you mm -hmm. can apply to which I, oh, cool. yeah if any other, anyone else in Norwich is like listening <laughs> what you <laughs> want more interns no I mean if um, they want to apply for the program I'd really recommend it oh, so cool, like okay. newer paid like half his wages so we just had to pay the other half nice. for him to like work full time with us for three months so mm. we were able to get him like uh trained up enough that I could offer him like a yeah for a job after his internship finished yeah, like I, I know you watched the uh, Norwich Screen Art episode mm. and he did, he seems to have done the same thing because it kind yeah. of like, it's a massive in, uh, investment in somebody financially yeah. to like keep them on and you're like never quite sure if their enthusiasm is real yeah. and whether they're coordinated enough. And yeah. like, you can't just have someone who's like passionate but crappy. So you yeah. have to really test them out. Um, I love your TikTok. I that that TikTok. Sorry, I, I know people haven't seen it yet, but they should. They should go up and look. Uh, well, nice prints on TikTok. You've only got three videos, but I'm excited about the channel already. The <laughs> bags were so sinister. I was watching. I was laughing, and I was like, "Oh, this is getting a bit sinister, like creepy." Because the bag is looking at you from behind. Yeah. And I was like, "Oh, I'm not sure, sure if I like that. That's gone into <laughs> like a like a weird." Um, psychedelic realm for a second yeah. so I had to stop watching it but Emma was belly laughing watching it <laughs> makes it hilarious I think well, you've just got such a good humor and it just comes through in yeah we kind of wanted videos. something that was where we could be a bit sillier I guess I mean we'll see how it like develops but <laughs> it's you kind of you feel like you've sort of got to curate your Instagram a bit if you know because that kind of people probably see your Instagram more than they see your website so you don't yeah. want it to be like yeah you feel like maybe you have to well depending on yeah. what you're um well, I suppose you, you don't really want to attract like super stuffy corporate clients really do yeah. you? you want like someone who's having a bit of a joke and doesn't mm. mind you swearing and stuff and yeah yeah <laughs> it seems to you seem to like uh integrate like like fuck prints and like, <laughs> also like fuck a hundred ways <laughs> like, yeah. in, in an art print. like that's really funny have we got our but print. I think it's over there. It's at the top there. It's in oh, the glass. Right. <laughs> um, I try and there he is. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's a fuck on glass. Um, but we we're gonna make a whole series of those. But why not? I think yeah. you get to I think there's like a fine balance, isn't it? You kind of want to be professional and get the work in, but then also you're like, I just want to be myself and work on art that I want to work yeah. on. And it's, um, you know, we're all, uh, so Mo, the other person who works here, it's like we're all kind of friends now and you want to, you know, we do get up to like silly stuff where we're having a break or we're trying to get through a big print run. So we're all doing like, like motivational dances to like keep each other going. <laughs> not, not get hysterical with tiredness. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Although um, we, got, we were trying to learn, we we're trying to teach ourselves how to do a duck walk. Look it up on YouTube if you <laughs> A duck walk yeah like Mo, oh Mo, is that like, where you like up. hold on to each other and you keep flipping around no no yeah. you kind of so if you're crouching down and like flipping your feet out it's right. um yeah it comes from like runway walking um you know and back in the sort of drag early drag days <laughs> <laughs> but yeah we nearly one of us nearly had quite a serious injury doing that. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds really good um, the other funniest thing that I've ever seen come out of your studio, it's not its not well nice, but it was um, Prince of the People, was that yeah. calendar. Like, that I'm is a, a legend. One. Naked calendar, guys. What yeah. month were you again? I was February, because that's where my birthday is. <laughs> <laughs> like, bags of February. Yeah. So, like, the coldest. <laughs> so, like, can you talk me through, like, why, like, were you raising money for people doing that? Or what was the what was the impetus um, again? I can't remember. Was it's it just something a bit of a laugh? we've well, we've always done. We always used to do at Prince. We'd always do a calendar each year, 
because mm. it was a way of um, yeah raising money for the studio because um, Princess People's sort of a community um, co-op sort of vibe. So we were always having to sort of um, raise money to you know keep going. <laughs> um, yeah. And you know obviously there's you can apply for funding and stuff, but that's a lot of work. And then you know there's there's funner ways to raise money. <laughs> yeah, so we used to do um, a calendar every year. Um, and then for like when we were 10 years old and we'd always talked about like how funny it would be to do like a naked calendar kind of like calendar girls um, <laughs> sort of style and um, yeah we just decided to go for it for like the 10th um, our 10th birthday <laughs> and yeah it was quite I don't know that it went down like you know I feel like some people were like oh I normally hang my calendar I buy from you guys <laughs> in my office but I can't really buy the I can't really hang this one anywhere so (laughs) yeah I think it's yeah it definitely made a big impression and it was really funny (laughs) it's 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 nearly our 10 annual 10 year anniversary but it would just be us two naked (laughs) it's not quite the same vibe is it it's just like at least you had like a mix you had quite a big group on it didn't you so it yeah like... I mean um not uh, like most people wanted to take part there are a few people who didn't which you know it's fine um <laughs> and we were quite um you know it was like um it was just like one not everyone was in the room for the whole thing it was like yeah. just the photographer and the model um and it was sort of you know making sure everyone was like comfortable with what level of um how big the squeegee they would go yeah so. yeah <laughs> <laughs> to cover up their bits the yeah <laughs> <laughs> so um can you tell us about so well nice princess like you just said it was based it was started to kind of like keep doing these artwork editions mm. but like how are you running your own work um as like joe stafford over here mm. like how are you how are you managing to like spend your time doing both or are you yeah. kind of just at work in the studio doing commissions most of the time or like how do you split it um it's kind of it's I mean that was kind of one of the reasons for um like stopping print to people and moving over to well nice was to get more of a balance because I felt like I wasn't it wasn't like happening with the way things were and so Mm -hmm. now we're kind of at a level with well nice and with Tom starting uh working with us like I can have I don't have to be here like every day like Mm -hmm. you know if I'm not here uh, Mo and Tom are in and stuff gets done without me being here, which is yeah. an amazing uh yeah feeling the first when it actually happened it's like oh my god and so you know all the hard work of like you know training them both up um is sort of starting to pay off and yeah it's otherwise it's a lot I mean I think I, I was just listening to your heck um uh podcast before I came on and I think you both said about how having like an internal monologue and it's like you're always thinking about ideas. You don't like sit down at a desk and be like, right, for an hour, I'm going to think of an idea. Yeah, I know. Some people seem to, but you yeah. you have an internal monologue. You yeah, know, constant. I'm yeah. like constantly thinking of prints. So like, um, and ideas for stuff. And so it's always just been like finding the time to actually like sit down and do them. So yeah, I think I'm starting to have like more of that time. Yeah, I think carving that out for yourself is really, really important. And mm. I don't, I don't know like how you felt about it, but I think COVID actually, it was kind of quite a nice thing to happen just from a business perspective in terms of like that was cut off, that type of revenue where you're mm. always like trying to see what the next commission was. So it does make you think like, right, what, what do I actually want to be doing this? First of all, it makes you ask the question mm. and then it says, what's important to me? And like, what am I actually creating at the end of the day? So yeah, I think it's I think it's really cool that you've been able to focus on your your own work a bit more mm. and yeah, build that body of work up. So like, where whereabouts do you want to be selling it? Are you going to the galleries or are you just kind of doing your markets um, and online? I mean, my stuff. I'm um, yeah, I'm happy for the minute to just be like doing markets and selling like online mm-hmm. um, because I feel like that's the sort of stuff I'm designing is you know like fun. And yeah that's kind of where it's like at but yeah. yeah I mean maybe when I get more time I'll make like a serious body of work and <laughs> <laughs> have like a exhibition because you'll definitely yeah. get in there obviously yeah. <laughs> you, know, you can't you can't say no you can't exhibit 
you've just yeah. been working with me for the last like 15 years or something yeah. um so have you ever worked for anyone else or is it always you literally mm. just you've been employed by anyone I mean not, feel like for, not for like printing like I've mm. had like lots of jobs like alongside oh right uh, uh, working like when we were doing critical people um uh so yeah I worked mostly like I worked as a support worker in college uh in a college I worked as a technician at the art school like a printmaking technician yeah um so it was only like just it was literally <laughs> just before the pandemic so I think I quit um I went like full-time freelance kind of uh like September just before the pandemic and then it was like oh crap <laughs> yeah um you know it's things like they you know there's uh I don't know if you guys got the, the self-employed income support grant and like we're not we're not we didn't get it because we're oh, directors. directors oh yeah they're all kicking the gonads. tits or whatever yeah. you call it like, I'm trying to think of I haven't got gonads but yeah that was yeah that was a real kicking shit funny I, I really yeah kicking the let's let's be back and spiral kicking the flaps uh yeah and we'll be like can I edit out kicking the flaps <laughs> um yeah I know we have got we have managed to get a couple of grants but that it was just some serious uh writing skills on trying to, to mold it in yeah. such a way that we could like be eligible for them so one of them we got like a gazebo and and stuff <laughs> so <laughs> that was that was quite a treat I think we've got like yeah we've got loads of stuff for that the whole basically the whole market setup for Guy Maggot is a oh. grant. Oh, that's um, cool. Yeah, so I'm quite good at grant application writing, but mm. just yeah, the eligibility thing's a bit of a bit of a shit. But at least you got the um, work experience person. How are they calling it then? They're not calling it work experience. They're calling it no, it was intern. Like a, yeah, creative internships or something like that. Yeah. Okay. So would you get more now that you've had that good experience with Tom and stuff? I don't know now it's it's sort of tricky because we're at a, a size where it's like if we had another person here it's like where would they go like where yeah. Yeah, phys physically where would they go? <laughs> yeah um and I think we need to like grow a bit more um as a, in terms of like the job like we need to be taking on like a few more jobs like I feel like yeah we've just got to the next stage and now we need to like um cruise here for a bit mm -hmm. and then um get to see hopefully at the next stage yeah we can take on another Open person up again yeah. yeah and maybe when you're even more hands-off and they can literally yeah. take the artwork from upstairs and you're kind of this must be quite scary like giving them the reins of the artwork and then just not yeah. being involved in the choices because surely it should be quite process driven like they know what pantones to mix right yeah. they know what paper to do they know how to register mm. so they should be able to do it but there are so many um choices with art prints uh there's mm. and it's also like there's so like what kind of things are you teaching them about like are you keeping them on a certain ink mixing system or like how no, are you teaching them how to do that type of stuff it's kind of more just sort of in stages so at the minute like that's great i'm on the ipad i can like take you from the place <laughs> oh cool yeah um so if you look um all right here's our board of jobs yeah and uh on this side right, that's not helpful for my phone account. on this side is like the number of layers that a print is so Jesus hell right? so we've got at the minute we've got a few quite big ones like a 13 13 12, colors 14, yeah and a nine wow. and then we've got smaller ones so it's kind of just doing in stages and building up confidence so mm. at the minute like and Mo and Tom are working on the smaller ones like this sort of uh, up to sort of eight colours and then I'm working on the larger ones but that will sort of increase over time as they get more it's just like confidence I can't I can't I can't see your eyes all right that. <laughs> there you go. um it's just yeah, that's... it's probably the same as t-shirts it's just confidence and experience and you just got to the you know you can't really yeah like you can't Problem with that, art, the art, art doing it. Yeah, the problem with the art prints is if you've got like a 13 layer design, um, you don't know until th layer 13 <laughs> if it's like a black outline that you've done it. You're like, yeah. holy shit, I've done 
12 layers here and the red's off and it's cutting through underneath the black. Whereas you have to print the entire edition and then you find out. Yeah. Whereas in t-shirts, you can, you can print four and then you can spot that, that yeah. issue on the first four prints and then, then adjust. So yeah, it's tricky. Um, I mean, we do do, we like proof everything beforehand um, to check the colors and like the, there's nothing off with the artwork, but even then it, things can like, somehow <laughs> change mm. between the, the proofing and the but how do you uh, do a proof do you have to print it all do you have to print every layer on top of each other just once yeah clean off all the screens and stuff and then oh, in, the like not like strip them but just no yeah. but just wash yeah, yeah. all the ink off yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah right but i mean we don't that's kind of for the high-end art prints we do that but if it was yeah. just you know a quick like poster job then we wouldn't um mm. we might like do the swatches for the ink colors and then um yeah yeah cool so what's your like favorite paper stock that you would uh what's your like go to uh, i mean with the for most we do print on a lot of like somerset satin which is like a rag yeah. paper which is really nice to work with um and it to print on but it's a bit on the expensive side so that always like <laughs> Yeah, um, you're like, this is what I want you to print on, and then yeah. there's a cheaper version if you make yeah. me. <laughs> well, I really like um, Mohawk and also Woodstock's. So Woodstock's a paper I've been getting into recently. <laughs> <laughs> um, we could geek out about paper, it's yeah. fine. Um, we, we used to use um, the tub sized because oh, yeah. I'm trying it's to like, good. yeah, because I feel like it doesn't, where well, you can put like loads and loads and loads of ink mm. on, and it doesn't like ripple and bunch. So you can do quite complicated technical stuff on it, I feel. But yeah, because it's I think it's sort of starched or something, kind of. Um, so it doesn't, and it's not meant to um, expand or you know, yeah, um, it's not meant to alter at all. Yeah, there's something like about it. Temperature or um, yeah, but that's yeah. that's very exp that's expensive that stuff. I know, but yeah. I. Um, <laughs> I helped, uh, there's this guy who we used to do art prints for and he's got like a studio and gallery and all that. And then he was clearing out his studio because he he closed down the studio and the gallery and stuff. And like when he was separating with his wife and things and he just went, just come and get it. <laughs> he was like, yes, I'll come and get it. So I got like, I borrowed like my mum's Volvo estate and we just packed it up with paper. Cause it was like, he didn't want anything. It was like, well, how about this? Do you want this? And I was like, yes. Yes, I want that. The massive like gallons of ink and just reams of paper. So I've, I've still got loads in there, but yeah, I'd never really be able to afford the amount of stuff that he's given. Yeah, it's insane. Have you have you ever been to um, John Purcell? The paper no, the, the shop, they've got a shop or is it just a warehouse? All right. Yeah, it's, no, a re it's a really cool shop. You can like yeah, obviously you could just go feel all the papers and like get, get all the little swatches together. That's like nice. nerdy heaven. And then yeah. um, like what kind of ink systems do you like? Because I think I've seen like got system three and... Yeah, I mean, we mostly use system three. It's funny like what you, yeah, hearing I think, again with um, the heck you were talking about inks. Um, but it's, you kind of use, that's what I used at art school and I did, hmm. I did a... Uh, internship myself at London, uh, London Print Studio and they used it so you just I feel like you can just kind of use what you're used to and then you're a bit like scared to like try something yeah. <laughs> anything, anything else um yeah I'm sure I saw something else in your studio when I was like looking at we Instagram. Yeah. used um for like gloss if we want to do gloss we use a uh, screen tech um yeah they've really recently or maybe like a couple of years ago only done like a water-based because it's water-based gloss yeah, um, so it's called aqua art, isn't it? And yeah, aqua art. And I think, I think they do. I mean, that's people are, they're always trying to suggest that we switch to them. They're like, oh, Print Club London use us. <laughs> I know. Like, I know. Okay. It's but <laughs> again, it's, I have, we have got some of their inks in for like gloss jobs, but they're so different to like mix. It just, we have to be like learning how to mix inks all over again. Mm. And um, just, they just mix so differently than System 3. So um, is System 3 like a Panto mixing system ink where they tell you the quantities and you mix it or do you just do it by eye? Um, you just do it by eye. I mean, we kind of use 
uh, we've got like Pantone swatch books, books and we kind of use, you know, underneath the little swatches, they have the sort of ratios. We kind of use those, but obviously we don't have the exact same inks as the Pantones. So yeah. kind of use the sort of what we see as the equivalent, the replacement. But yeah, it's kind of a lot by eye. That's what I was doing for years. And I know yeah. it takes ages, but I was always thinking, oh, this is me being not professional. But yeah. now I'm hearing that you do it and you're a professional who does <laughs> incredibly high end prints, that it's fine. I always felt a bit naughty that I wasn't doing it. And I was yeah. just kind of like dabbing in a bit more black or a bit more orange or whatever. But Yeah, I mean, I feel like, again, I'm like, oh, maybe I should, occasionally I'm like, oh, maybe I should like look at, <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe I should, uh, but it's, um, yeah, I feel like it I've works. got the, yeah, and there are like a lot of, you know, uh, the sort of stages it goes through of like often with Moosey we're doing um the print will be based on like a painting um and it's like well who has the painting sometimes the artist has the painting and they're in another country sometimes Moosey has the painting so in terms of like matching stuff that's quite a difficult job mm -hmm. for like Moosey that's not our part of it so when it comes there's such a chain I feel like even if you did use the Pantone system and mix everything exactly it wouldn't necessarily mean that it's exactly like the painting yeah you know, or wherever it's come from the original yeah so it's better to go by like feeling and you know colors change when they're next to other colors and all that that's sort of true stuff. that's yeah. that's a whole science that is yeah. um it's really really interesting i had to prove that to somebody <laughs> who was like do you know like when the gallery comes in they're like this isn't the right color and we actually had to chop chop it out I had to chop out a swatch and then a swatch of the original little like tester and then he can see that they're the same but genuinely when you put red mm. next to green and stuff it's it does alter in your eye mixes color yeah which is the whole point of like cmyk prints and stuff yeah. so um like where where are people finding out about you as like being someone who they can go to to get their art prints done at the moment um so no, I mean, we're working on at the minute some sending out some promo packs. Um, so yeah, um, we're hoping to like set yeah get those done in the next month and send them to places that people we want to work with. Um, so yeah, it's just I mean it's a lot of like word of mouth, like especially around like Norwich. Um, you know, people always sort of hopefully recommending people, but you know, people come to me now wanting t-shirts or something. You know, we'll like pass them on to. Norwich Screen Art or Vino Sangre and sometimes yeah. you, you guys depending on oh, thank you. <laughs> I don't know what they want oh, yeah, I had someone ask, asking me about vinyl uh, the transfer things I think you were talking about with Heck the other day and um, right. I don't know if they ever got in touch with you um, but you know those sorts of stuff <laughs> okay thanks so yeah sometimes people don't say where they've heard you from like yeah. recommended you from but every so often it it does come through um, one thing I really wanted to ask you about is, are you, basically, are you like super like tired of doing the event organizing or will you ever bring back like oh, the Norwich yeah. art, art carving? <laughs> I have to, it's the best yeah, know, and we loved it. And it's just, Norwich is such a unique place. Like people value art and they, they love it and they're like engaging with it. So mm. You don't, don't feel obliged or anything like yeah. the pressure from the entire art community in Norwich. Yeah. But, um... No, I mean, it was, um, I mean, one of the things like uh, when I was having my sort of um, COVID sort of life realizations was that I kind of didn't miss uh, doing some of the stuff that I was doing a lot, you know, event organizing being like one of them and mm -hmm. like teaching. I didn't really miss teaching. <laughs> That was bad to say, but I, I don't miss teaching either. No, <laughs> like I really that. didn't miss it. I was like, oh, so if I don't, I'm not missing it and I don't want to go back to it, then maybe all I want to do is just print things in my own stu in my studio and not have anyone bother me. Yeah. <laughs> just turning That's into like so a grumpy true. old woman. <laughs> um, yeah. But it was, I mean, there was a lot of factors involved, like, um, like when we started doing up the brewery, the brewery is now like owned by different people, but mm. Red Bull Brewery where we did it. And it was just, it was a lot of stress because there's just so much, you know, when you think about an event and all the like health and safety and just, uh, you know, toilets and food and just everything was like, mm. yeah, it, yeah, it was a lot of 
um stress but if someone non, else non wanted, fun related things yeah I suppose. Mm. and you, I felt like I didn't even get to enjoy the event myself because oh. I was like um just running around making sure that everything was happening and um yeah but uh if I mean if someone wanted to do something with the name or find you know another I feel like it had gotten maybe a little bit too big for the venue just uh-huh. in terms of the amount of people coming you know just um I th- did you come to like the last one we did there? I think so I think we would the, have gone to everyone you, else, yeah, yeah. Because the, the brewery had like changed and they put the seating bit. So we kind of had like half, we didn't have as much space. Mm. And then just the cues for the food were like going everywhere. And I felt like you can yeah. really. But you did it. It was a success for sure. Yeah. Like, it was like everyone was loving it. Obviously, apart from you, because you're stressing about the toilet <laughs> situation. But yeah, it was it was really unique and cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, maybe well, you just want to be a participant. <laughs> just yeah. like have a stall and have a burger. <laughs> I don't know whether it's linked to whether it worked because it was at the brewery. Like if we tried, to, if we tried to do it somewhere um, else, whether it would have worked or not. It's just a fun, like mm. it was. It was a surprise to us that it was such a success. And it's trying <laughs> to figure out like what exactly was the success, then, but like what elements of it were, um, yeah. what elements we could change without making it not a success I guess yeah I think I think you'd get followed around we would for sure with the brewery is just I think it's just like food trucks as long as you've got food yeah. trucks and beer and stuff so like ideally when I'm if I was to like picture my ideal day it would be having my flatbed <laughs> press a big stack of paper and just making the screens on that day and printing mm. maybe having like a nice big beer and just being like left alone with the gates closed is that <laughs> your scenario as well or do yeah. you have... <laughs> pretty much yeah I think so it's um yeah it's yeah yeah because <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know because I've run open access here as well and I've taught people in person and it's great and it's it is inspiring stuff but then some people use the use open access not really open access but they use the teaching as kind of like a fun experience day and mm. then you're like okay I've been entertaining for the day but I really want to teach people who are using this and mm. like getting into screen print long term and I don't want to be like the entertainment for yeah. eight hours and I'm like literally sweating my hands are cracked yeah. and the, there was no point there feels yeah. like there isn't a point to it I mean like, that's yeah that's exactly it. Like a lot of, I think people came on like our courses of print to the people as like a leisure activity, which is fine. But it's then if they're doing that, they kind of have a certain level of like expectation in terms of experience. Like, you know, they want nice chocolate biscuits. I they want coffee banners. Well. Yeah. They want you to have a nice chat and they want you to be like, oh, how was your weekend? Oh, you know, all that sort of stuff. And that's exhausting. Like, never mind the actual teaching the screen printing just making sure everyone's okay and having a nice time it's like Mm. exhausting um so yeah yeah that's that is like you're watching them you're like do you i've told you that you can't faff around here because the ink's drying in and they're like so yeah my daughter went to college and and you're like fucking hell i've got to watch the screen again now (laughs) Oh, uh, I think yeah. I've done my my years as well. I think we're in the same boat. But um, yeah, yeah. it's like the last course we taught between after oh, before lockdown. I had to this guy. He was in a real rush. He was like, "Oh, I've I forgot. I was meant to be taking my wife out for dinner because um it's her birthday." And I'm like, "What did you book on a screen printing course?" <laughs> <laughs> and he was in a real rush, and he just um he like squeezed the ink things too hard and it just exploded like everywhere and um (laughs) I just had to like go outside and have minutes myself because I (laughs) I felt like I was going to just explode at him and I was like this is your patience has gone you've been doing this too long you can't you're going to kill someone (laughs) this is it yeah oh god I even had schools in and like there might be like 10 10 girls from the school and one of them spray painted themselves in their face with a can she just wandered off spray painted in herself in the face just to get attention and I was I felt a bit like that like what am I doing like, yeah. I'm getting paid but 
Yeah. I don't want the money. I don't want no, it. I, know. <laughs> I just want to be left alone. I don't give a shit how much money you're throwing at me every year to like be a child finder. So yeah, I completely get it. Online teaching is the best because you just kind of yeah. put it up and then they... <laughs> you guys have been doing so much and mm. um, yeah, I'm glad it's been going well. Um, yeah, we just kind of like moved over to we had to but then it's kind of also we're just going to run with it and just keep putting up that that kind of um skillshare content and stuff see where that goes as well so do you, do you like have facilities to print your own shirts because i know you've got your own you've got quite a few shirts in there yeah okay. um no i mean we've got like yeah we've just got two flat beds, as you can see yeah but i mean obviously you can print t-shirts on them but it's just, yeah you wouldn't want to, you know, so we could print, actually, V and I did our t-shirts, um, oh, cool. but um, okay. we could, we have done a couple of, like, textile jobs. On yeah, them. like, you could just but whack a board in do, and like, do it. One, yeah, you can do, like, one colours and all that stuff that doesn't need to, like, register exactly. Um, yeah. So you can't really, we don't have a heat press or anything. Um, so. so. You just iron yeah. it or something. Yeah, although um, I've got a couple of friends who've got heat presses. So. Okay. <laughs> heat presses for me. Yeah, it's so just really small. Um, yeah, just stuff for ourselves, really. Like we've got, we printed some our tote bags and things. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, I like I like the brand. And then do you, do you, I've seen like quite a few of your prints are like random shapes and things. So do you work with like a local laser cutter, or how are you achieving uh, that? Oh yeah, there's um yeah, my friend Lucy's got a laser cutter in her shed. <laughs> and she uh yeah she does the laser cutting that was a bit of an experiment yeah seeing if you could I mean yeah if you could laser cut yeah those circles behind me are like laser cut so she's got a big laser cutter yeah I think it can do like 60 by 60 about um centimeters wow. yeah so do um, you do you cut it and then print it or print it and then cut it yeah we've had to um yeah it's been a bit of experimenting but I think yeah with the circles it was like um mostly because it's quite it's quite difficult to like register um for her to mm. like register the paper even you know to keep if the paper's not like completely flat then it won't yeah. um it's quite difficult and so that just seemed like the easiest way around to get the have the less the least amount of duds i guess yeah um but it does make the printing a bit messier but it's not impossible <laughs> yeah exactly what well, because it like goes onto the bed and then you yeah. like, keep cleaning it up and stuff I've been watching, there's these guys in America, I think they're in Chicago, called Pop Dink. Popping? Popping. Um, and they seem to be doing it like the other way around. They're, and they've done some like really crazy shapes. So I quite, I'm like, keep looking at their stuff. Like, Have you done this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Like doing this podcast allows me to just like directly ask you guys like yeah. all, the, all the shit that I've worked on. Like, do you know, you just snoop in other people's things. Yeah. Like, how are they managing that? So yeah, yeah. Are there any um studios who you'd want want to like in in the UK who'd want to like hear mm. more from or see or ask them? Um, well, I, wanna, I thought yeah, cause, um, I was thinking about who. I thought it'd be quite um. Have you heard of like Prince of Thieves? Prince of Thieves. Yeah, they're based up in up north, like Leeds or something. They do a lot of gig posters. Okay. Um, yeah, so it's, these are mostly like paper-based screen printers. Um, is it White Duck who are in Bristol? Yeah, I know White Duck. Yeah, and then they're kind of again like film band posters, but they get the best jobs, don't they? Gigs. Yeah, I know. Oh my god, <laughs> they like release this album and then they get like an edition of gig posters, which are just yeah. sick. Yeah, I know. We've collected a lot of gig posters in our house. In our well, that's what house, I want to but... do. Yeah, that's what I want to do more of. That's kind of where my, like, my dream jobs have been, like, yeah, gig posters. Mm. I suppose it's just, like, getting in with the producers or something? Or no, yeah, the event organisers? Yeah, that's what it's... Yeah, that's... It's, I don't know in this day and age who it is who'd make those sorts of decisions. I'll dig around but, for you and then let you know. Yeah, that's... <laughs> that's, that's, yeah, my plan. I think it just vary, it varies. It's quite, like, I think... I did, I worked in America for like three months and All right. gig posters are such a big deal there. Like it's insane. And mm. I just, I really want that to be the sort of same to come over to the UK um, just because I love gig posters. But, yeah. but over there, it's like the band will have a tour poster that has all their dates on it. 
then the so the work I was doing when I worked out there was specifically look, the venues will get posters made for like every gig they have and so they're oh, right an archive and people will go to the show buy both they buy like the band's tour poster and they buy the venue like mm. poster because the venue just yeah. has you know the date of that specific gig on it not all the and yeah. Yeah, you know, there's just such like a market for it. You know, they were doing runs of like 500 posters and they were all like selling out. And yeah, it's crazy. You're like, can I have some of that, please? That's absolutely oh, no. treats. Imagine oh, the no. money. You're like oh, as well. No. Just like, yeah, you could just do like a couple of them a week and it would be yeah. like you'd be sorted, wouldn't you? Yeah. Um, I feel like that they have like that. Americans have... Um, like their culture is kind of like they they pride they value history a lot, even mm. though the history is quite short compared to English history. <laughs> but um, yeah, they do value the even Keep the, the old like, t-shirts and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. I suppose if it was venue specific, that's a really interesting take on it. I hadn't thought mm. of that. Hmm. But, but it's just I feel like it's I don't know why people take a bit more convincing about posters than like t-shirts. You know, it's no brainer like oh we're going on tour we've got to get t- t-shirts made but yeah. if no posters are kind of they'd be the same price or if not cheaper depending on mm. the design I don't know it's just and you know often with t-shirts it's like well you know you can run out of si- certain sizes and stuff but like yeah. posters it's just one size like <laughs> that's true <laughs> maybe maybe you just need to like uh hook up with um yeah heck press and uh Venus Agra and just yeah put, put a package together for them instead maybe they could do an upsell for you or something mm. it's, it's difficult yeah. yeah and then budget wise also because those bands aren't weren't touring very mm. much so yeah i wonder how they're making their money if it could be through the gig posters as well it's tricky yeah. isn't it so like what other platforms do you sell on? do you sell on anything like etsy or not on the high street or anything like that or? yeah I've, i mean my own work yeah i sell on etsy mostly um but um, yeah, I'm kind of debating whether to do something else because Etsy have just put all their fees up and everyone's like, oh. <laughs> oh, cool. everyone's like in all the Etsy chat groups and everyone's like, I'm going to leave. I'm going to get a Shopify. Rah, or I'm going to go to whatever. And it's like, okay. Shopify yeah. is a piece of piss. It's yeah. really easy. Is and that what you We've got it. We've had loads of Shopify that- accounts. Yeah. yeah. And they're just like, it makes a really satisfying no- noise on your phone if you make a sale. Mm-hmm. Ka-ching! You're like, yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna out for that tomorrow. Yeah. And then um I just saw the little mini keychains on Etsy, but that's about it. Um but yeah, Etsy's like full of the problem with it is there's so much shit and mm. also this copying thing where like you could put something out and then it just gets like recreated in 10 different yeah. ways on like mock-ups. There's a lot of guff on there, which isn't very mm. curated, so yeah, maybe your own Shopify might be a good idea. Even just don't even cut off Etsy, maybe just alongside it. Oh, no, I don't think I would ever because it's always going to bring in people who wouldn't necessarily find you. Mm. Um, but yeah, a lot of um, Etsy sellers I know kind of are starting to do both and um, so that they can. Yeah. Yeah. Because that can be fed from your TikTok now, can't it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. When your TikTok, <laughs> when your TikTok goes absolutely famous. Yeah. That is the funniest thing, that one, that video. Yeah. Um, did you say the... I don't the... Know what do as an encore. <laughs> <laughs> we just, just keep bringing out that horrible yeah. bag yeah. thing that's, like, really sinister. I don't know why it's haunting me so well, much. Well, you kind of read it out where we were going to be, so it could be, we could be anonymous, but now they like, outed me. <laughs> oh, like, no, I have. The, the yeah, I have. I put, the, put the face to it, so, yeah, yeah. you can't do it. You can that's probably really guess. I mean, there's only three of us. And... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Someone's behind the camera, so yeah. yeah, I know, I know how you're you're moving. Yeah, <laughs> that's really funny. Um, I also saw that thing where you jumped. I think that might have been on your own personal account where you jumped into the pond for Christmas, like oh, that yeah. ice ice thing. And I found it so funny because you were on the edge of the dock, and I could see that you were just like trying to build yourself up to oh, do me. it. it. Took ages. I was like, it was You're still so gonna do cold. it. <laughs> it was so cold. Um, yeah. And we were, it was my, with my brothers, we were all really hung over. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was, yeah, it works, isn't it? Like it kicks our hang- hangovers, our hangovers just went. Um, <laughs> yeah, but 
So the, the, is that the new Christmas tradition now? You have to dunk yourself in the freezing cold pond? Yeah, we'll then... see it because it wasn't, we thought it wasn't that cold. The pond was cold, but like the outside air temperature was actually quite mild. Um, but if it was, if it was any colder, that would have been a really silly idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's really funny. Um, all of our Christmas traditions are kind of like melted away now that all my, everyone's like grown up and have their own little families. Mm. So I'm just like, I haven't got any kids, so I haven't got <laughs> any like, you know what I mean? I'm still kind of like floating around everyone mm. trying to like make up We're my still, traditions. But... In my family, it's like no one's missed Christmas yet. I've got like three brothers and it's like, and it's the person who's the first person to miss Christmas is going to be. <laughs> everyone's like hoping the other one's gonna do it um <laughs> but christmas is the kind of only time we all see each other really because one of my brothers lives in austria and um oh right so, yeah oh cool so yeah we'll see <laughs> <laughs> just see if you get back in the ice yeah. and see if you do another calendar to yeah <laughs> if, if the team grows maybe yeah it's a bit odd like recycling this i feel like you need like four or five people to do a calendar am i yeah. wrong we could do one with um, the dog. Um, oh, yeah. Squeegee. I haven't mentioned yeah. Squeegee. Yeah. So, yeah, you have to tell everyone about Squeegee the dog. Is it there? She's in her bed. Oh. She's a bit annoyed at me that we're staying late because um, oh, so. everyone else has gone home. She's like, why have we gone home? <laughs> For people listening, we're just seeing Squeegee the dog now. Hi, babe. How are you? She's not was a little home time. <laughs> I'd love a squeak, uh, I mean, a studio dog, but not allowed because I've got bunny rabbits. So, uh, <laughs> bunnies, bunnies before dogs in my household. No, she was, yeah, it was a dog. I want to call it squeegee for as long as I remember. <laughs> <laughs> like mini, mini squeegee. And that's really cute. Um, it's really good to see that you've kind of like, yeah, um, managed to make this new studio and like you're kind of molding it. Because it gives you that fresh, fresh outlook to be able to mould it and make it work for you mm. instead of just being like pulled along by all the open access and organising yeah. and stuff. So I mean, yeah, it was really like a hard decision to make, and um, but it was kind of it's what I think if, what's been a theme, or well, definitely for, with Mikey and Joby as well. It's like you know you work really hard um, to get it to a level, and it's like even if you know, and you want to have a nice like have a nice time you don't want to be working like all the time you want to be at a level where you can you know mm. enjoy your weekends and your evenings but yeah you can go and just work like loads and loads but yeah I think and especially like when you're younger you kind of you say like yes to everything yeah and then as you get older you're like we realize that actually you can say no and like saying no is okay. mm. yeah and it's kind of more important to have that sort of the time um yeah yeah so yeah it's just about yeah getting a, so are there jobs that you say no to now like like that are um it's been a while it's more like really the harder stuff and it is um it's like i think yeah with the poncho story you were telling to <laughs> the poncho story yeah the red ponchos or, oh uh, fuck. Yeah, yeah there's so many like that yeah got, like, like there was uh, things there's things like that and it's what it is is like other people have being in a stressful situation and then putting that stress on you and it's mm. like that's kind of when I'm like no you're the one that's stressed you're not making I'm refused to make let you make me stressed that's really so, good yeah that's what I've been yeah really trying hard to do it's mostly people who want stuff the next day and it's like well I can do it the next day if I stay here till like two three in the morning but I don't want to do that <laughs> it might not be as good like you yeah. might you might accidentally have to not cut a corner but you might have to make a concession on something yeah or and it's not fair and it's not funny and no one needs anything next day so yeah. just and shut it's up. like with screen printing you know like with making screens like stuff can go wrong mm. and there's nothing or like things you can't you know like suddenly you're like expose unit bulb could go or like something could have happened weird to your emulsion and you can't there's just so many like elements to it that mm. are out of your control or even you know most recently with um uh you know deliveries and stuff it's like yeah like you're talking to someone else like 
that yeah i can order the t-shirts today but whether they'll definitely i can't guarantee that they'll definitely arrive tomorrow and yeah all that sort of stuff um it's yeah i think those have been i think there's been a couple of like last minute jobs i've said no to recently but mm. I know it is very stressful and that's that's something that we've got really good at now um filtering that out because I don't it's because I'm not in charge of that anymore so mm. all of the quote that's the only reason that we <laughs> it just goes through M she does quoting she does timelines she's quite strict on emails and stuff yeah. if they manage to get through to me they they try and convince me over the phone Mm-hmm. but I'm, I'm getting stronger and stronger and be like oh just uh, I'll get back to you and then I write I can write it in an email much much yeah. more strongly worded than I can accidentally give in on the phone but mm. that's just through being burnt I think in real mm. life experiences whereas some people can't bear the thought of turning down work and yeah. money but it's you're you're not actually uh earning more you're yeah. just setting yourself for, up for more losses and pain and you might lose money on the job anyway yeah because of you might have to like buy the papers twice or yeah some bullshit because they put that stress on you and it's also like you maybe consider doing it if people learn their lesson but even like if you say to people <laughs> i'll do it this one time i'll do it for you but in the future you have to give me two weeks notice or whatever they never do they never <laughs> do no. They just think you're always going to do it for them, like, um, because you did it before. So, oh, we mm. did it before. And it's like, no. I know. Um, yeah. Did I, did I tell you, did I do it? I'm not tell you, but did I tell <laughs> another podcast person, um, we actually continued working for someone, even though we'd bring them to small claims court over a payment. <laughs> this is how much I didn't learn my lesson. Like, I was working <laughs> with them for like a year, and then... They said that they paid me and they made such elaborate lies that I can, it's like, um, oh my God, there's a Netflix set, there's a Netflix series about this. Uh, oh, the, the Tinder swindler. Tinder swindler. It was the yeah. Tinder swindler of business and I cannot <laughs> believe how I got duped so bad. And they even said that they put the check in the letterbox. So I went to the letterbox and there isn't a check and I'm like... I'm right here. I'm talking to you on the phone. So it got to that level of um, deception and stuff. But people are insane, and with, especially with like paying and things. So even that, like getting payment out front, mm. it sounds like, oh, you're, I need 30 day terms and stuff. But you're like, I don't need the stress of chasing you up mm. for 30 day terms. I'm getting it now. And we're going to do this very professionally and on my, on, on my schedule and what works for us but yeah it's tricky that yeah trying not to get bullied by customers yeah. basically <laughs> i can see that you've had a had, had yeah that i was gonna, as well, yeah, but... gonna experience with a guy he didn't pay me for like a year and a half and then like, <laughs> ended up taking him to get to pay me and he was like oh i've been going through some stuff I've been getting like divorced or something and it was like oh I don't even care if your cat died, yeah. mate. You're giving me yeah. money. Like, the only thing, like, I basically started doing this thing where, like, every, and it was just so much work. Every day I'd email him and I'd add 10%. And I, like, <laughs> I did that for about a week. And then he finally paid me. And he's like, but I'm not paying that extra that's on top of it. And I was like, oh, fine, just fuck off. Like, I don't. <laughs> I think this is a good time to show, no, uh, should I show you? <laughs> I'll, I'll do something and M can edit it out if she doesn't think it's okay. There's um, <laughs> we framed this. <laughs> this is what I'm funny. I can read it to you if you want. Yeah. Is that this, the... uh, no, this isn't the one where we took him to small claims, oh. but we nearly did. I think we threatened him. I did a logo for this guy and then um, he got it, but with our watermark on it. Mm. and he wanted us to remove the watermark and blah 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 this is after months okay so it's like 28th of may 1 24 a.m in the morning to our web- website address you can shove that invoice up your anuses you cheeky little bitches how Ooh. bloody disrespectful and unprofessional of you trying to rip off your customers i've tried to resolve in a respective manner wrong words and you still think it's okay to try and charge me for a service that you haven't actually delivered, sent from my iPhone. 
And I just thought it was so hilarious. I blo- blocked out his name, but yeah. I was like, okay, that is just, that's the kind of thing you get and you can't yeah. believe it. I could write, we could write a book. Yeah. I think if we just went around all the studios and just collected yeah. all these hilarious stories, because people can't believe it. You do need yeah. t-shirts that say cheeky bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Cheeky little bitch, bitch, bitch so I shove out my anuses. <laughs> I never knew what the plural of anus was before. Is it anus? Anus eye? Oh, <laughs> oh my God, that's absolutely grim. Yeah, well, that might be a nice, nice way to end it, Jen. <laughs> Sorry, you have to have that horrendous thought in your evening. <laughs> that's fine. That's funny. I'm glad it's not. It's because it is as as much as you're like you know you can say like oh I really like just being in my studio and printing it's nice to like connect to other people to talk about yeah you know so so that you know that you know everyone's having the same sort of experiences (laughs) yeah (laughs) whether it's with like customers or suppliers or whatever it's like yeah there's um, there's these these people are everywhere and they're in every industry and you're going to experience them if you're in any kind of service providing thing yeah well I'm going to follow you on TikTok now and you have to keep it up Uh, because uh because it's hilarious and I hope I hope it catches on because TikTok (laughs) is so variable isn't it like you can get like one with hundreds of thousands or nothing and then I've just been just looking at some of the videos that are on there. I'm just like, my mind is like blown. It's like, what? There's just so much on there. People doing so much random stuff. It's like, yeah. what people, the hell? People get famous for really random shit, like yeah. being a postman or being a plumber or, and stuff like yeah. that. So it's like for the common people, you don't have to be polished and yeah, all of that kind of production value. The best ones are the ones talking to camera and stuff and just, yeah showing your real life experiences I think so yeah I'll follow you that on there and then is there anything else you want to like tell people about well nice or um I mean I don't know just you know yeah give us a little (laughs) check us out if you haven't need any posters check us out get some band stuff and then also get your band posters because that's a sign of a real band yeah uh yeah make up a band Get, yeah, <laughs> do a tour post, go on tour get us to do the posters um yeah okay. but at least we all guys, know how to recommend now so yeah you guys um i heard you, you talking about norwich a lot and you guys should move to norwich <laughs> i know oh well, we, it was so close we put in offers in like five houses but it was just it just got so much we're like yeah. we can't get in here it's just impossible so we're waiting for stuff to die down and then we're definitely going to live in norwich for a bit and then abroad for a bit as well and just see where we end up but yeah we'll definitely come down and have a pint with all of you guys just get yeah. you all in the pub at the same time <laughs> we've kind of been talking i might have to do it this year talking about starting like a printer's guild it's like <laughs> yes printer's guild yeah. we could just have like a private facebook page for everyone who's been on the podcast because yeah they're kind of we're trying kind of cherry picking people who are like-minded anyway aren't we so yeah sod it I started Although we might have ruined the guild by talking about the guild on it maybe uh, we we're out. not doing we're not doing the guild guys yeah, there's no guild, guild. There's you no can't guild. join no. <laughs> invite only I like calling it a guild as well that sounds really yeah. grown up <laughs> that's really cool okay and we'll get badges made okay yeah. there is no guild well, there's no... no it's some kind of secret sign like <laughs> I don't know what videos. Yeah. <laughs> That's awful. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, I really appreciate you coming on, Jay. And I'll, That's um, right. It's I'll, been I'm going to get this. Oh, you have to do me a selfie as well. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, um, okay. Get cool. that sorted. Is it going to be with the terrifying bag? <laughs> uh, I don't, yeah, I know. I could do that. No, oh. I don't know it's the dog or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll see whether it's the terrifying bag image yeah. gonna be live on my website forever now. <laughs> but, okay. Okay, cool. I'll let you and Squeegee get off. Yeah. But yeah, cool. really appreciate it. Have a nice evening. And you. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Bye.